How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, I wanna to do a review of what I think is the most simple, easy solution for a solar inverter with battery setup on an RV that you literally don't need to do any type of an install. It's as easy as just picking up a unit and putting it inside of your RV and plugging it in. While the simplicity of these is quite amazing, the, the capacity and the output is extremely impressive. The ironic thing is the, the brute force and the simplicity of this unit gives it a few more capabilities over our inverter setup, which I think is one of the most capable inverter setups for RVing out there. So let's unpack what this unit is. This is the Delta Pro. It has 3,600 watt hour capacity. It has 3,600 watts out. So this plug right here is a true 30 amp plug like you would find at an RV park. So this is one of the few units that actually puts out a true 30 amps. I've seen this plug put on other units, but this is the one unit that I've seen that does the true 3600 watts out continuously. So it's a, it's a real 30 amp plug that you can get 30 amps out of it continuously. So it also has solar input on the back. You can expand it by adding batteries in the back. You have additional plugs on the front. You can plug in your phone or charge whatever USB or USB-C device you want it on the front. But what does that mean? What can you run on the inside of the RV? What is this capable of? Because if you're not building your own system, some of those numbers may not really make sense or you really don't care about them. So you just wanna know, what can I run in my RV? It can run a couple of large things at the same time. So if you wanted to make toast in the morning, you wanted to make coffee at the same time, you could do those simultaneously while watching the depressing morning news. So. Not that you'd wanna watch the news in the morning, but you could do all three of those things at the same time. You could even run two ACs with this. We have microwave easy starts on both of our ACs, so you can turn down that temperature, fire up the AC, and get it going if you wanted to sit down and watch some TV. Once that one's going, you can turn on the second one. Or for my last example, you can have the AC still going. We don't have a microwave, but you can put in some microwave popcorn in there, pop that at the same time the AC is going while you sit back and watch a little bit of your favorite RV channel on YouTube. No, we don't actually watch TV just all the time. It was a bit of a joke, but the point was that you can do a couple of large things and still have the conveniences on inside of the RV. That's what this thing is able to accomplish. So if you're not into looking at all the specs and wanting to see what it can do, that's basically what it can do. It can do a couple of large things and, and still have a TV or something simple going in the background. Well, you could just set this outside and have it like a generator sitting outside on the ground. You can put this in the bay. So if you wanted to kind of have it almost installed on the RV, you can put it in that bay. You can put in your ground neutral bond plug in there in case you have an EMS surge protector that would shut it down if that, if that wasn't there. And then you just plug your RV directly into this. What I did is in that bay is we have a little trim piece down in there. I just pulled that out and then we were able to run the wire, the plug fit right into there so we could just plug right in. Now I do wanna step back and take a look at the specs of this unit because it is good to look at it in the, the scheme of different units and different systems that are out there. Sometimes we look at systems we have in the past, we will in the future, where you're looking at it from a budget standpoint. You wanna try and keep that cost down. So that's the consideration when looking at those budget ones. This one is for a really simple setup. You don't really have to think about it, you just wanna be able to plug it in and go. And then we also consider other ones where you can customize it exactly how you would like. And some of those systems can get pretty large and expensive. So so let's take a look at some of the specs. So I think a good place to start is to start with what we have on our RV already because I love this system so much. This is my go-to, my number one. I think this is kind of the, the gold standard type of a system that kind of everything else measures up against. Ours is a very modest system. It's not a huge inverter battery system, but we have one multi plus two on here and the components that you can build around that and the system that you can have can go so much farther beyond just an inverter battery solar setup. You can have tank monitors. You, you can really go as far as you would like with it. And as far as dependability, we've had this thing running nonstop, whether we're plugged in an RV park and all of our power goes through it, or we're unplugged using it off grid, or we're using it in a power assist situation. This thing is used nonstop constant as we live in our RV full time. If you're interested in this, I have kits and different systems that you can put together yourself and build exactly how you would like it 
down in the description. Because one of the highlights of a system like this is you can build it with as much capacity or with as much power as you would like or as much solar as you would like, you get to pick exactly how that unfolds. But with that comes a layer of complexity and not everybody wants to dive into a solar system that deeply to where they're, they're designing everything. They just wanna be able to get something that can use solar, that can be charged up, and you can use it when you're off grid. And so that's what we're looking at today. So now diving into this unit, the first thing we wanna look at is the inverter. We've already talked about how many things it can run and it can run a lot. That's because it has that 3,600 watt inverter in here. Our Victron, the unit that we chose, they have sizes that are larger and smaller than that. It's the 3000 Victron inverter, but that can run 2,400 watts continuous. So 3,600 to 2,400 watts continuous. This, this has a large inverter. That can also be expanded too, because this is really designed more for a home backup is what they were kind of targeting it for. But because of that, it's like a small home backup. It works well for RVing. As far as capacity as 3,600 watt hours of capacity inside, built inside of this. So comparing that to the system that we have outside with our three batteries out there, it's like just over two and a half batteries built into this unit here. And you can expand that. You can put two extra batteries on here. So an extra battery is 3,600 watts. So we have one extra battery outside so that, that adds another 3,600 watts of battery to this setup. So that means that if you were trying to duplicate with our batteries outside what that would be like, it would be just over five and a third batteries. So you can you can actually scale this all the way up to 25,000 watt hours, which is a, a huge system. For our setup for the RV, I just wanna stick with something simple and talk about this and the extra battery. When we were first testing this out to see what it could do, we were running AC. We were able to go all day using just this unit. The AC wasn't running continuous, but it was kicking on, kicking off. It was used quite a bit during the day. We, we made coffee, we did all kinds of stuff, and this kept up for the entire day. If you're keeping it small and watching that your power usage, you could go for multiple days with this and the extra battery. Now, I thought it'd be helpful to run you through a few of the scenarios how we've been using it and just kind of show you with the battery capacity, how far that would take you while using your RV. So it's been kind of raining off and on. So we're inside the RV right now. We have some lights on. My son's playing video games in the other room. So you have an Xbox and a TV going. We got the computer charging up and it's saying that we're gonna be able to last for about uh, 15 to 16 hours doing that. I don't have any solar or anything coming into the unit. That's just working off the capacity. So you can kind of get a gauge for what that's like. If we were to plug in solar, even just the 400 watts that we have, it would wipe out what our output is with that input. Now, since it's a colder day and we're not gonna run the AC, let's turn on the heat pump. There we go. Give that a second to fire up and we'll see what it does to our capacity. So now that that's normalized a little bit, you can see we're down to 95% and that can run for about three and a half hours continuously. That's, that's quite a long time to be able to run the, the heat pump slash AC. Now we turn that off and you can see that we go back up to around 15 hours of being able to run what we currently have. So turning things off and on, you can definitely see we'll, we'll play with the capacity, but also what we can bring into the system is, is gonna be a benefit too. But that brings us to charging this back up. There's multiple ways to be able to charge this up. Number one, let's look at solar because if you're going out boondocking, that might be your first choice is to grab some solar panels. So this can do 1600 watts of input of solar. This is where the typical inputs are on the back of the unit. So you can see that we have a, a plug here and it's a pretty small unit. That's because they allow you to run at a really high voltage, 150 volts if you wanted to, all the way down to 11 volts. And this is a 15 amp max. So you don't wanna go over 15 amps. So you can just connect this in here. We just tested it with 400 watts. It's what we were able to kind of separate on the roof of the RV and dedicate to charging this up. And then you just have your, your typical MC4 connectors that you can connect to your solar panel. So we connected to this, they were all in series and it did a, a good job as an MPPT charge controller. So it makes good use of the solar, the solar panels that you have out there to bring that power in. It really wouldn't be that difficult to bring in about 1400 watts into here. Max is 1600, but uh, hooking up the panels to be able to do that, it, it really wouldn't be that difficult. Now EcoFlow does sell solar panels and I'm gonna put links down in the description to everything that we're talking about today. This unit, the extra battery, the solar panels, all of that will be down in the description. But you don't have to get just their solar panels to be able to work with this. You can use other solar panels. You just have to make sure you don't go over the voltage or over the amperage. What we're gonna try here is charging from the vehicle. They have the adapter that you can just plug directly into there to the little power port and then charge in here. It should only give us about eight amps, but it's definitely worth testing. May not get much, but we should test it. 
Okay, so I drove for a little over an hour and I got about 3% into the Delta Pro. So it's definitely not its strong suit, but it does give you the ability if you needed to charge it up just a little bit and you're driving somewhere, you could charge it while you drive. You can also charge this unit just by plugging it into the wall at home. So you can pre-charge it before you head out. You can plug it into a generator and charge this up so you don't have to listen to the generator running all the time. You can kind of bank that power and then use it in a much quieter situation for the RV. So that way, if you needed a CPAP machine or something like that, you can still use that to run your CPAP machine at night and you're not running a generator all night long. It's one of the things that I love about inverter setups is it gives you that flexibility to use the power when you want to without having to run a generator all the time. You can also, through the app, change how fast you want this to be able to charge up. So there's a switch on the back if you want it to fast charge, or if you want to be able to set that in here, how fast you want it to charge. So maybe you're on a, a generator or you're on a circuit that you don't have the full capability of that circuit and you need to dial it back a little bit, you can do that. You can bring that down to 400 watts if you wanted to, or you can crank it up even higher to charge it faster because it can charge pretty fast. And you can plug it into the wall at home and charge it that way while solar is coming into the back. So you can combine these different ways to be able to charge it up to charge it up even quicker. When you do charge it, it does generate some heat. So it does have some fans here on the, the sides and it'll blow that air through there. And so when you're charging or discharging rapidly, that's when it starts to build up some heat and it needs to dissipate that heat. And it does a good job getting rid of that heat. As far as fan noise, this is what it sounds like while it's charging. It's not max charging and it's not max inverting. The, the more you do, the more the fans need to run, but this is kind of the typical sound of the fans. If it's inside, you would hear it. If it's in the bay, we don't hear it at all. So that brings up two things. Number one, uh, we had the app in there. And number two, we also had this in that storage bay when we were using it. And I mentioned that this does expel heat when you're using the inverter or charging it up. So is it a bad idea to keep it in that bay where it's in, in closed? So I wanted to test to see how it performed in a situation like that. And when we were just running one AC, just running one AC, that's, that's a pretty large load. And using other things inside the RV, watching the temperature inside of that bay, I had a thermometer in in there to track the temperature in there the entire time and it never even got above 85 inside of that bay so it, it did really well and we weren't really pushing the inverter that hard running one ac on this 3600 watt output really wasn't pushing it that hard so we didn't really see the the temperature go up in that bay if you're going to be charging it at a fast rate or you're going to be really pushing it to its limits i would definitely open up that bay door maybe just bring it outside don't leave it in the sun but giving it the ventilation that it needs not necessarily ventilation but the temperature that it needs you don't want it getting overly hot for this unit to be able to work now before we get into the app because i had mentioned that it also has an additional way to charge is right here it has an infinity port so that works for when you're doing the, the home backup system. They have a, a lot of accessories that would attach to that, but you can also use that to be able to go and charge at an EV charging station. So an electric vehicle charging station, this could, I don't think people are going to be flocking there to do that, but it is a backup option that you could get the adapters to be able to charge this at a, a vehicle charging station. Now the app is pretty straightforward. It gives you how much battery capacity you still have, how long it would take you to run that out, it gives you the temperature of what it is in there, it tells you your input, your output, and you can turn on the different panels. So if I wanted to turn on this panel, you could actually turn it on from the app. You could set how high you want it to charge or when the discharge rate is, when you want things to turn off. So a lot of features packed into this app and you can connect it to a network. So you can connect it to your home Wi-Fi or the Wi-Fi on the RV, and then you can remote access this from other places. So this is a good app and it, it does work well. I haven't had any problems with it. Now comparing it to the, the Victron app, it's hard to compare that because you can add so many different things to the Victron system and, and so many different capabilities and the, the cloud storage that you have there and you can track how much solar you've generated in a day. It doesn't quite do that. It's not meant to do that, but it does give you a lot of control and function from inside the app to be able to use and, and see where the, the status of this is at. So if you wanted to see the status and you didn't want to have to walk out to it and you could just check it from inside your RV or if you're away from the RV and you wanted to see if the solar was charging you can check that from the app and it, it works well. 
Now, one thing I will mention is this thing is pretty heavy. It weighs 99 pounds for this unit. The extra battery is less because it doesn't have the inverter and all the other components inside. It's just the extra battery that connects to this, but it does get pretty heavy at 99 pounds. So it does feel lighter than, I don't know if you've ever lifted like a 90 pound bag of concrete or Portland, but that is feels heavier because you don't have handles on it. This has handles, something to hold onto when you're putting it up or putting it down from, from the truck or putting it in a bay. Now it is almost set up like a suitcase where you have this handle in the front where you can extend it and you have the wheels on the back where you can roll it around so that way you can so that way you can get it from point A to point B easier but you still have to be able to pick it up and put it in the truck or a bay or something like that. So you can do a team lift, you got a handle on each side, but weight is a consideration if you're thinking about having to move this all the time, that is a consideration with this unit. Now, one thing that this unit can do that our inverter cannot is it is heavy to move around, but you can move it around. Ours is installed on the RV and it's not going to be moved around. So you could use this as a home emergency backup at your house and then you can bring it along in the RV. So this can kind of do double duty where it gives you functionality and emergency backup at home and then you can have it on the road as well. So if somebody just wanted to buy one unit to be able to do two things, this might actually be a good option for that scenario. Now, wrapping this up, the last couple of things with this unit, it does have a display on the front that you can turn off and on. You turn these separate panels on by just pressing a button and now this is all activated. The inverter is now on and this is activated. Same thing goes for the 12 volt supply on the side. You press the button and now it activates. It turns it on so you can have 12 volt on the side. The extra battery is really easy to connect into the back. You have the wire that connects from the extra battery to the back of the unit. And it's that, that simple to connect and use. Uh, the screen gives you a uh, great simple information right from the get-go. It tells you what the percentage of your battery is at, and you also have that for the extended battery. And so you also have an input and an output. So as that extra battery is sending power over to this unit to be used for the inverter, you can see that in the in and out. It's, it's displayed really nicely. I've been wanting to do this video for a while because I've done videos on our Victron equipment and I love it. That is, like I said, my first choice. But I also did one about a year ago where we had the EcoFlow kit where it's the, the power hub and then you build around that. And that is a, a simple way to go, but you still have a lot of complexities of trying to wire all that up, trying to get a sub panel. And it works well for like a, a camper van or a 30 amp RV, but when you step it up to a 50 amp RV, it suddenly gets much more complex in trying to install that on an RV. So looking at the simplest, easy solution that you don't really have to rewire anything, you don't have to know or learn about solar, you don't have to have anybody install anything on your RV, this kind of wins in that category for me. This is about as simple and as basic and as powerful as you can get in that division. As far as cost, the cost is actually pretty comparative to what you pay for a Victron setup or a, a larger inverter setup. Once you do the inverter, the batteries, the solar charge controller, the, the switches, the bus bars, the fuses, all that kind of gets compiled together to be really close to what this would be. If you wanna add the extra battery, it's gonna cost more, but also if you wanna add extra batteries and more capacity with a Victron system, it's gonna cost more as well. So they're actually pretty comparable when you start piecing out and comparing the two for cost, this lines up fairly close with building your own system. Just a quick side note, I contacted EcoFlow and they gave me a code to be able to share with you so you could save 5%, but it's only good till the end of April of 2023. So I'm gonna put that down in the description. It's EFJared5. So that will save you 5% if you're interested in this. So there's definitely pros and cons on each side. With this, you get the portability where you can use it at home and then you can use it in the RV. With the Victron system we have installed on the RV, it's kind of a set it and forget it. You have solar panels on here. Everything's just automated to be able to go through and do what it needs to do. I don't have to bring it along, put it in there, change anything. It's a set it and forget it and it's always gonna be there for us to use with the RV. But with that, we don't have the portability that you have with this. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, kind of looking at the Delta Pro and what it can do for RVers from an RVing perspective. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. If we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video. I did have a scenario, I was, I was lifting this thing in and out of the truck a bunch of times, putting it in and out of the bay, just trying to show that it is heavy, but it is portable and I was trying to do one where I was showing that I was lifting with my legs and uh, 
the look on my face from this is the look of, yes, I did just rip my shorts. Next time, sweatpants. Sweatpants that wouldn't have ripped. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that.